Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all my blessed beloveds out there in Radio Land. Actually, it's Video Land. Can you believe that I'm actually doing videos now? I really don't like the triple chin effect, but you know, it is what it is. I decided some time ago to do the best that I can and be the best that I can by providing interviews via video because most of us are locked down and we're not able to see people. And sometimes people are really cool to see because like myself, I make a lot of expressions and it can be rather funny. So take the humor with it. We're in a pandemic. It is what it is. I've been really fortunate enough to be able to interview people from all over the world to find out their five tips and tricks to what they're doing to keep their head above this whole pandemic craziness. One of them is social media diet. I cannot stress that enough. People are so charged and so empowered to be angry about this situation because, well, we're bags of water floating on a rock surfing through infinity. Like we ever have control over anything? We don't but you can pretend that you do while the rest of us sit back, have a cigar and drink a Jameson, all right? And what are the, some of the tips and tricks that we've taken away from the shows over the weeks? Find your passion. What makes your soul burn? What gets you excited? What gets you out of bed? This is a perfect time to reinvent yourself because, well, you have the time to do it. What is your mission statement? Do you have a personal mission statement? I think that's terribly exciting to think about. What do you say to yourself in the morning and what do you say to yourself before you go to bed? That is so critical, how you're treating yourself right now to keep your spirits up. Gratitudes and blessings. You all know if you've ever read my Facebook, every morning you have my whole list of blessings and gratitudes. So it's important. It's important to feel aware and acknowledge what's available to you right now and how beautiful life really is. Even though there's all kinds of other stuff going on, take space from it. And what are you doing to be of service? What are you doing to be of service? Are you writing letters to people, checking on your neighbors, hosting really cool shows with people from all over the world, playing guitars like Bill Abernathy is gonna to explain to us today? What are you doing of service? How are you having fun? How are you becoming a better version of you? And that's what living and thriving is about, a better version of you. We can always improve. I don't want you to change. I like your ornery self. Chaos is good. Messy hair is great. But you can always take another step forward, right? And that's what this is about. So my excitement is I was on you, you, your own university the other day so check out that on youtube it's connected down here over there wherever it gets connected but it was a great conversation on empowerment and um how you can move forward even when you've lost absolutely everything so check that interview out it was fun with alicia uh we had lots of laughs but bill is on hi bill hi how are you today i'm very well and you have a lot of ladies behind you you stud you well, they're not all ladies. They're you know? not. Oh, no, dear. but some some are. So you know, we could talk about that if you'd like, right? Yeah. But there's a there's a few males and a few females involved. So, well, being a being a guitar fanatic, um, I was excited when Michael asked me to interview you because you have a great story, and so I know the backstory. 200,000, 300,000 people do not know the backstory. So we're going to give you the simple questions that I give everybody on Living and Thriving, which is, who are you, what do you do, and what inspires you to get out of bed in the morning? All right, well, for question one, so you'll have to remind me, because you know I'm old and my memory's maybe not all it could be. Uh, some of that I think maybe got left in the 70s, but we're not sure about that. I, you know, <laughs> uh, who am I? So I'm Bill Aberdathy is my name. I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, you're sitting or actually broadcasting today from my loft. So this is where I live uh, in uh, the city market area of Kansas City. I was born and raised effectively in Kansas City my entire life. Uh, did a lot of uh, music when I was young and uh, <laughs> had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I'm glad that there was an Instagram and, uh, the, you know, iPhone photos in those days because... Uh, there may have been some additional explaining to do, but, uh, you know, back in those days, it was a good time. And so, you know, I got to travel all over the country and play a lot of music and do a lot of things. And then I got a little bit older and, and uh, uh, when I was about 19, I started having a little bit of problem. 
uh, with my vocal cords. And uh, then I had a tour <laughs> that summer that pretty much toasted them. And so I had to kind of step back. I had to step back from music for a while. Uh, initially thought it was going to be six months. Uh, and uh, so I went out and got a job because you have to pay the bills. And uh, now I think in June, I'm going to have my 43rd anniversary <laughs> with the company that I went to get a job for for six months. So uh, I had, uh, you know, the typical things, you know, got married, had kids. My kids were both very athletic and uh, ended up being division one uh, free ride athletes. My son played pro baseball for a bit. Uh, and if you know that lifestyle, there's not a lot of time. There's not a lot of time for things other than, you know, running your kids around, going to different ball games and all that. So I did, I still had a music studio in my house and I still played a lot of music. Uh, I wrote songs uh, during that time, but I really didn't have the time to perform and, and get out. So uh, when they got done, uh, with their college, I kind of had this whole stack of songs that I had written, and I thought, you know, I wonder what if, right? So called up some old friends of mine, and we went into the studio and, and started making music, and uh, now uh, we're on uh, album three. So uh, the current album that's out is called Crossing Willow Creek, and uh, it's, uh, you know, it's doing pretty well across the globe. So you know, it's kind of one of those, uh, sometimes you get a second chance in things. And uh, in the music world, I certainly got that. So uh, very, very blessed. And it's one of the things that I'm thankful for and one of the reasons that I get up in the morning. So I don't know if I covered all the questions there, but I tried. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> um, so was it like cancer or what was, what was the vocal thing? Well, if you remember the music in those days, so that was in the 70s, right? And that was when... Uh, <laughs> a lot of people call them hair bands, right? I call it arena rock. So Rush in Kansas and Boston yeah. and those guys, right? And so I don't remember it because I wasn't there, but I remember the playbacks. Well, I don't remember it, and I was there, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they say if you remember it, you really did experience it. Well, you know, I experienced it. So uh, in, in those days, you know, I did my own thing, uh, my own music, and I also played in some bands that did – that style of music and so if you, if you know what that is that's way up in your upper register all the time and I just developed vocal nodes you know which is typically not a big deal you know a little bit of rest uh, uh, will heal that but mine ended up being three different surgeries and you know it, it just is what it is right but uh, again you know when time came around and uh, the voice came back a bit uh, I started doing what I do now so what's really beautiful about this story if people are fully listening is that I'm always, always saying that you always go back to where you start. Mm -hmm. It's always full circle in your life. You never know when you go back to that, that beginning point, but when you're passionate and your soul's on fire for something, we somehow miraculously make a way back to what gets us excited, right? Yeah, but I think sometimes, and, and I'll just speak from my experience, I think sometimes you tend to want to take that for granted, right? So my music stuff, I've played, I played since I was a baby, you know? I mean, I started playing guitar when I was six, seven years old, right? And, and it's kind of always there. And so you kind of take it for granted, you know, until it's not there anymore. And then you realize how valuable that is to you. You know, I, I think you see that a lot in, uh, in a lot of relationships, you know, personal relationships that people have. You know, they don't really realize uh, what they have until they don't have it anymore, until it's gone. So, um, yeah, but, but I think it's important exactly what you said, to know where you came from. So Crossing Willow Creek has songs on there that I wrote 40 years ago, right? Uh, because I wanted to go back and revisit those songs and revisit those times and revisit what was going on in my world at that time. So very important. When you're writing your lyrics, is it something, so I write books and I, I write, I blog, I do quite a bit of writing. It doesn't mean I'm good at it, but I do it. Um, I am very focused on index, index cards. You'll see index cards all over my house because if I have something, I write it down real quick. What is your kind of maverick way of writing lyrics? Well, in my corporate world that I live, I am an organizational guy, okay? I am very structured. I got a list. I'm going through my list. I'm doing it every day. It's what I do. I manage projects all over the world, right? So you have to be organized. Um, 
my music stuff, particularly when I'm writing lyrics, is the exact opposite of that. It is a total mess. Uh, I mean, if, if, if I turned the camera around right now and just showed you what's going on in my loft, uh, you know, it, it's, not, it's not what my friends would call a bill thing, but you have different ideas and different ideas at different times, right? I, I remember explicitly um, one of the songs that is on uh, uh, the Find A Way album, the second album, I was stuck. I had written the song and it was, it was everything that I wanted it to be, but I needed the bridge, you know, the bridge that connects one end of the song to the other. I needed this, couldn't find it, couldn't come up with it, stressed over it, did all that. Finally, I just got up, walked in, got in the shower, started completely thinking about something else. And I wrote the lyric to the bridge with soap on the wall of my shower. That so, sounds you like know, something I would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm living on posty notes when I'm writing, you know, so yeah. Yeah, I think I think to be a creator, um, you really have kind of a little madness to you. You have a little bit of spark. Um, and it's it's this beautiful chaos that just comes and races through either your heart, your soul, your mind, divine intervention, whatever it is, it just whoosh, comes yeah. right through you and it gets exciting and then you put it down and that rush, it's almost like an addiction, don't you think? Like that rush that, oh my God. And then you put it down and, and you feel drained, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think music, uh, lyrics, writing, right? Is a little bit of magic because nobody really knows. I mean, nobody could tell you where it comes from. Nobody comes where that can tell you where that spark that you were talking about comes from. It just comes. So, you know, I just kind of, I think that sometimes the universe just reaches down and slaps you upside the head and say, Bill, sit down and write this because you could explain it, you know? And uh, uh, I, I'd like to tell you, I had some magical, mystical thing that I go through, but uh, not me. I get an idea, you know, or I hear a story or I meet someone, uh, you know, I have a little mantra in my music. Now that makes some people very nervous, by the way, and maybe it'll make you nervous because that you'll, you're, yeah. So my little mantra is, is that if you hear a song that sounds like it was written about you, it may have been because that's how I roll. You know, I hear a good story or I see a, a, an event occur or something happens to somebody that's close to me, um, you know, and that kind of triggers the thought process. And then, you know, in the posty note, hell you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> Index cards, so much there easier. There you go. There Pile, you go. Piles, I have a sink jar. Um, so I love the idea that you utilize your experience and articulate it in the form of lyric building. Do you also write the music? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I write all the music uh, uh, along with the, the the lyric and the melody and you know all the stuff, uh, all the parts. Right. I have a lot of influence in. Um, I found uh, <laughs> this is a life lesson, right? Sometimes it's best to step back and let people that are experts take over a few things, right? So the folks that I work with uh, when I'm doing my recording stuff, they also happen to be the same people that I play with when I play live with a band. They are outstanding musicians, far better than me. And uh, for me to go in and try to say, okay, we're going to play this, right? Well, what I do is I'll go in and say, hey, guys, you know, this is what I'm hearing. And I think it might sound like this. And then I just let them go do what they do. And uh, the, the end result is far better than anything that I could have created myself. So, yeah. Well, it's nice to have a pocket of co-creators. That's fun. Oh, yeah. Good times. I, I call it um, when you're with people that you resonate with like that, I call it mental popcorn. So you like pop, 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 pop off of each other's enthusiasm, excitement, and you co-create this beautiful thing that if you had it on your own, it might not have been as vibrant without mm -hmm. that extra mm -hmm. popcorn. Yeah, yeah I, I did a project, uh, not to the extent of a friend of mine. So, so I could play a bit. I always like to tell people that I used to be able to play a lot and, and uh, now I can play good enough to you know, impress people that really don't know any better, right? And, and, but I've got a friend of mine who is a musical genius. He can play anything. And he is extremely proficient at it, right? And he actually uh, made an album one time, and I tried to emulate this. I did two songs like this until I finally just stopped. Uh, but he did an album of 11 songs, uh, and he played every instrument, and he sang every vocal part. 
uh, the beauty of the whole thing is the title of the album, actually. He, he just called it Playing With Myself, but uh, that's, another, <laughs> that's another story. Danger, Mr. Robinson, danger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I attempted that, right? Uh, because I thought, okay, now this is, this is, I consider myself really an acoustic guy. I mean, I can do the whole rock thing and all that, but I really like acoustic stuff and really pretty, you know, guitar stuff and all that. And uh, I thought, these two really pretty songs, this is all me, man. I'll just do that. I'll go in and do it all. And uh, yeah, no, I shouldn't have done that. I ended up using one of them. One of them's on records, but uh, yeah, it's way too much, way too much. You're, you're very, uh, what's the result is too limited on, on your particular skills and abilities. So that's when I learned to get out of the way. Trent Reznor does that. Michael, uh -huh. this is his real name, Michael something. And uh, he's really quite, he's just the mad hatter in that regard. Like, he's mm -hmm. just is phenomenal as an artist, mm -hmm. extraordinarily talented. But, you know, there's a lot of things that I can do that are great. And there are a lot of things that I don't want to do. So I don't bother really getting the details on that because I know I can hire somebody to do it. Yeah. Um, the fun part about this pandemic for me is that I learned how to be a plumber. And not something I ever want to do professionally, you know, but there's times and reasons and causes to have to step outside of your box. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you challenge yourself on every level, it really provides more experience for a better story. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things can you talk about in a short minute um, of challenges for you? Like what, what do you instill in yourself to practice challenge for your creations? Oh, for the music stuff. Um, it's interesting. So, you know, you talked about being a plumber. I once built a house by myself, right? I, I dug the hole. I did everything, you know, that was involved in building the house. And that was a challenge because I wanted to see if I could do it. The one thing that, that I try to do with all of my music stuff is not to get stuck in a box, right? So you have different genres of music. So you have country and folk and rock and, you know, all those different things that the radio stations put you in a box in. I try to avoid that. What I try to do is, and, and this is where the challenge comes in, whatever the story is that, that the song evolved from, right? Because everything starts from a story, right? And so... I have the story and I know what the story is about. And then I try to pick what is the best genre of music that I could choose to relay that story the most effectively, right? And so it may be a rock song, it may be a country song, maybe a blues thing, it may be folk, it may be jazz. You know, I'll never forget the day I went in to record, <laughs> record with the guys that I had written this song. And it was one of those that uh, I, I call those songs the ones that tie my fingers in knots, right? Because they're a, a bit tougher to play, right? And uh, I sat down and, and uh, we were just doing, you know, the very scratch, very first things. And uh, uh, two of the guys came in and looked at me and they said, oh, my God, Bill, you're playing adult chords. You're playing actual adult chords, Bill. So, you know, yeah, so you try to challenge yourself in that way. And, and it keeps it fresh and it keeps it interesting. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fun for me. Where do we find more information about you? I mean, if somebody wants to check you out, what, do you have a website? I'm, I know everything will be posted down here after we record, but um, I like it also verbally because people actually watch and cook at the same time. I've had some really interesting feedback, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm out there, right? So I'm available to about any place. You could go to BillAberdathy.com, uh, which is my website. On that site, you can read a lot more about me and, and a bit about my story and see a bunch of press and, and all this stuff that we've gotten over the years. Uh, I, I'm pretty active on Facebook. That seems to work really well uh, with the demographic that my my uh, fan base is and so very active on Facebook at Bill Abernathy singer songwriter uh, which is another story have to be another interview why I had to change that to singer songwriter but uh, uh, you know obviously if you want to just get the music you know you can order it from me it's Amazon Pandora Spotify any place that you get music iTunes you know any place that you get music you can do that and uh, you know we're there 
So I always tell people, uh, just Google Bill Aberdathy, and if I'm not the first five hits that you get, send me an email. I need to talk with somebody about that. So oh, you get it done, Bill. <laughs> you get it done. Shoot, I'm not going to play with you. <laughs> oh, it's just fun. It's just fun. Yeah, yeah, it's just fun. So, so back when I was growing up, there was Roy Orbison and mm -hmm. Tom Petty, and they formed a band, Traveling Wilburys. Traveling Wilburys, you bet. So, oh, goosebumps. Hi, Tom. Um, when you were articulating that you like to delve into different genres, that popped into my head right away, huh? because I would think that that's probably what you're essences music wise yeah, a, is a little yeah, bit of yeah. a bit uh so influences right the, uh, the traveling wheelberries i mean you know bob dylan tom petty were in that group you know, I know. I mean, wow you know you just sit back and look at the legends you know but from an influence standpoint a, a lot of the folks from from that time were very were very influential on me so you know i started playing when i was really really young and, and my siblings that kind of got me into music were way older than me and so that was the music they were into. So that was the music that I learned to love right out of the chute. But uh, I still remember the very first concert I went to uh, that was a real concert. I think I was probably 12, right? And I went to see Loggins and Messina, right? Oh, wow. Loggins yeah. and Messina, Kitty Loggins, Jimmy Messina, you know? And it was beautiful because uh, the band's bus had broken down. And so they played a three hour concert with. Kitty Loggins and Jimmy Messina and a guitar. And it was spectacular. It was just spectacular because I got to see how personal what they do is. You know, a lot of times when you got the band and, you know, the flash and the show and the dancing girls and all that stuff, you know, you 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 tend to lose what's really in the music, right? And uh, when I got to sit and, and listen to those guys tell the stories and really relate to the audience and and and, you know, why did I write this song and what's this song really about? I just got fascinated with that. And, and uh, from then on, that, that's kind of my thing. <laughs> I mean, I just I, finished the tour in January over six states that I played completely solo by myself, nobody else. It was great. I have way more props and respect for any type of artist that is a true artist, meaning they don't need the bells and whistles. I remember I went to, I attended college in Vermont and, uh, there's blizzards all the time. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. It's New mm -hmm. England. Mm -hmm. And um, Blues Travelers started touring right after his motorcycle app. He did not stop. He kicked mm -hmm. ass and didn't take any names. And I got to see him. But what was even more cosmic about that was we had a blizzard, so half of his band couldn't make it. And they still performed for us. I was like, yeah. yes, because that's yeah. what a true artist does. They yeah. really know their shtick. Yeah. And so to this day, I'm just like, oh, that was one of, one of the best concerts I've been to. And there was a few that um, got caught in the blizzard situation where only part of the band showed, but they still went on and they still kicked ass. I mean, yeah. really kicked ass. So my props to having that energy and that devotion to your art because some people they fake it until they make it um mm. but the ones that really 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 deserve honors are those who can just keep going yeah it, the whole solo thing is my favorite thing i love it right i love doing that mainly because uh you're not relying on anybody else right and you can pretty much do what you want to do if you if you play a tune let's say you're at one of my concerts and I play a tune and, and you get it. I can see in your face that you get it, right? I don't have to play the next tune on the set list. I can play another tune to accentuate what we just did and make that connection, you know, with the folks in the audience. It really gives you a lot of flexibility and uh, it, it's cool. I, I love doing it. Love doing it. So. All right. So we're winding down, my friend. Two questions, tough ones. What is the difference between a female and a male guitar? Ah. <clears throat> the way that they need to be handled. Okay. So a male guitar. So for example, the one that is over this shoulder. Okay. He is a hand built Yari nine string thing that I play. I've had him for forever. He is a male guitar. Okay. 
he plays, he likes to be roughed up a bit. He can play pure rock and roll if I need him to, right? He can, he can do pretty stuff, but it's, and it's good, but it's not perfect, right? As opposed to over my other shoulder happens to be his sister, who is a female, just by the way that she sounds, because she likes that. She likes pretty. She likes being touched very gently. She, I don't want her to sound like it's like sexual, but that's who she is, right? That's the music that she wants to play. And, uh, you know, oh, there's two other females up here on the wall with me because that's what, I don't know really exactly how to say it. It's, it's when I played the cello and the violin, those strings are very personal. They're very uh -huh. based on their own personality. And, you know, you do have one personality over another with each instrument. And I always love asking artists that question because it kind of makes you a little uncomfortable. Yeah, I've never really tried to explain it before, but it's funny when I go into the studio and uh, all the guys are there and I start unpacking, they'll know what kind of music we're playing that day by the guitar that I brought. All right. Oh, Bill brought the 12 string today. Oh, wait a minute. He brought the other 12 string today. We're going to be in that mode. Or he brought Blondie, which is the one over this shoulder. That's the mode we're in, right? So uh, everybody understands the different personalities of the guitars, I think. They all have names. I named them all. So, yeah. and, I, and I've never met an artist who isn't that personal with the voice that they're using. And, and not necessarily this voice. Yeah. But, you know, your instruments are definitely an extension of personality. And so it's always fun to, to recognize that when I'm talking, you know, to musicians, because it's a very passionate lifestyle. You know, it's a very passionate form of work. And um, even when I'm talking to individuals who are painters, they have their paintbrushes, their favorite paintbrushes, uh -huh. their names, and they're either a boy or a girl. Yeah. <laughs> because of of the emotions that yeah. are triggered in in the artist so it's and how a they respond how they respond to you yeah. you know it's different yeah. so is your wife happy now that you're out of the house and not in the house all the time is she like woo bye bye bill well i have i happen to be single oh uh, lady. Yeah. Check yeah. them out, ladies yeah there it is i'm single I, yeah bill abernathy.com <laughs> Go get it, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, flagrant self promotion out of the way. Uh, 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 I, you know, I, I live in Kansas City, and my kids and my grandkids, you know, I have three grandkids as well. They live here in Kansas City, and uh, instead of them being, oh, Papa's going to be gone, because I travel, right? It's what I do. I've done it for the last twenty years in my corporate gig and with this music thing that I do, and. And uh, I'm not around much, as opposed to, well, obviously now I am, right? During the during the virus and all that, right? But uh, it's they're very used to be uh, not being around much, and so the value of that is is what I am around. The time is so special, you know, and the time that we really value that that I'm in town. So I, my grandsons, I have twin, nearly 15 year old grandsons, that come and spend weekends with me. And we just call it guys' nights out because it's just game on. And we just do whatever we want. You know, order pizza, drink root beer, play video games all night long. I don't care, right? But because we have not as much time as many people do, uh, when we do have that time together, it, we, we really make it pretty special. So. And I, I think that's in t it's terribly important. Uh, one of the things throughout my journey is I don't really celebrate holidays like normal people. Um, I celebrate time and experience because time and experience is far more valuable than ribbons and all of that materialistic consumerism crap. Mm -hmm. um, and it weighs heavily on your children in the sense that that's how they grow into really amazing people is time and experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm a huge advocate for that. But we are winding down. So do you have a couple of tips and tricks of keeping sane during the pandemic? Because you're in Kansas City, you don't even got the ocean. I'm in Jurassic Park, I got dinosaurs and hissing turtles and ocean. 
Yeah. Well, think? to be honest with you, my daughter tells me that I've been training for this my whole life because I enjoy <laughs> being, I enjoy a solitude I, a bit. I have hermit-like tendencies, right? Uh, but here would be here would be what I've told other people, you know, because friends will call and you know they're nervous and anxious and when are we going to get out? And I I just look at it and said, man, this is where we are, right? This is the situation we're in. Use it. You may never get it again, right? Use it, you know. So personally, I'll guarantee you, I've got the cleanest, most organized closets on the planet. Uh, all my guitars are spectacularly clean. All new strings, everything. You know, I'm writing new music because I have additional time, right? And so, my advice to anybody was number one: stay home, stay safe. You know, wash your hands, wear wear a mask, right? Uh, secondly utilize what's been given us it's, it's don't look at it as is is somebody mandated that i can't get out right look at it it's a gift right what can you do with it what's the best very best thing that you could do with this time that we have because we may never get it again so if you want to look back at it and go oh man i remember the quarantine of 2020 and i wrote a whole album or i remember the quarantine of 2020 and all i did was sit around and you know play video play video games really you know so uh, utilize it as best you can bill you are fantastic and yes you're definitely more than welcome to come on to talk about your other life and i know that we'll reconnect at some point i'm sure michael will put us back together somewhere somehow sweet thank you for making music my favorite thing in the whole wide world and as if you've ever watched or listened to my radio show i'm always talking about blaring it to the top of the speaker's possibility and just getting into the soul of it because that is how your soul opens up and just is so happy music is amazing yeah well here i'll give you a, one more piece of advice right? okay back in the day you know when we all had long hair i had an afro at the time by the way but back in the day we used to wear uh t-shirts that i had made into sound check for the very reason that you just said and the t-shirts were very simple it just said there is no substitute for volume. Turn it up, turn it up, enjoy the ride. There really isn't. And, I, and you know, audio, audiologists probably don't like my messaging too much, but you know, that's how your soul dances and it's just, yeah. oh, it's amazing. Well, Bill, I hope that you survive your hermit, hermit, hermitness. Hermitness, is that pandemic, a word? Pandemic isolation that you're obviously yeah. enjoying because you clean and ladies bill definitely testified that he is single he cleans he's organized and he's got room for you in his closet bill abernathy.com don't forget <laughs> bye bill i'll see you later thanks have a great day you too dear bye -bye. so you're watching living and thriving with rusty and once again i get to travel all over the world in the comfort of my I'm not in pajamas. I gave that up two weeks ago. Home. And we get to learn tips and tricks for things that help people go through the pandemic and get excited about life. And it's been really wonderful. And you guys got to learn a little bit more about guitars. And Bill, he's pretty awesome. Check him out down here or over there, wherever I decide to put his website. It'll be up there somewhere. Find your passion. What moves your soul? Write a mission statement. Get on that. Vacation time is over. I'm tired of seeing everybody walking around in three-day-old spaghetti-stained t-shirts. Go and get your laundry done. All right? This is a good time to recreate, reinvent, and feel good about yourself. Take advantage of this, just like Bill said. I'm telling you, this is the time. Routines are really important. Vacation time is over. Know that I love you. Know that you're beautiful. Write a letter to a stranger. Be of service. Say hi to your neighbor. Hey, look up and smile. Oh, well, you're wearing a mask, but your eyes smile. Mine do. They're so big, they probably smile over in China. Shoot. Till next time, living and thriving. <laughs>